some people singing some songs and I'll give you the opportunity if you wish to sing along with choruses and various bits in the song. You're not forced to do it but if you want to join in that would be great. Uh, the idea that there are two different traditions in this country, especially in this northern part of the country, is fairly well established and whatever case you can make for there being two religious traditions uh, to political traditions, when it comes to music, there is very little of a case that can be made for two musical traditions, because the music of the island is the music of the island. It's music that has been there um, from native music, music that has been brought in from England, Scotland, Wales, uh, America, and been naturalised or nowadays it's international popular music which everybody hears and everybody is influenced by. I'll mostly be sticking to what people would call traditional music. <coughs> uh, the music that was here really before mass communication. And that the idea is that music itself doesn't have a political agenda. It doesn't take sides. It's only when you put words to it that the sides uh, become more apparent. And just to give you an illustration of this, I'll sing you a verse from three different songs which all use the same tune. The tune is an American Civil War tune called Tramp, 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 The Boys Are Marching. I'm sure you all know it. I remember it myself. It used to be very popular on what was called Athlone when I was young. Our radio awareness it then became an NRTE, which broadcast through the transmitter in Athlone in the middle of Ireland. And uh, on hospitals' requests on a Wednesday afternoon, we used to have a half day from school in St. Columns in Derry, where I went to. And we listened to hospitals' requests. And this was inevitably played for uh, Josephine from number 15, who's in the Matter Hospital, hoping she's back on her feet soon. Tramp, 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 the boys are marching, they would play. Now this tune, it was written, the song was written by a fellow called George Root in 1863 during the American Civil War. And the whole song tells about a Union soldier who's in a concentration camp, a prisoner war camp in the southern states and thinking about his home place in the north. It was almost immediately an international hit. When you consider that this is before there was radio, TV, records, any way like that, the tune became immediately popular and it was so popular that four, three, from seven, four years later, in 1867, a fellow called T.D. Sullivan wrote words to it, God Save Ireland, which some of you may have heard, a patriotic ballad, ballad of uh, the Manchester murders, Alan Larkin and O'Brien. And uh, he printed the song in The Nation, which was a publication at the time, a nationalist publication. On, I think it was published on a Friday. And on Sunday, he himself was in Hoth railway station. And he heard somebody singing it in the railway station. So that is an overnight sensation, an instant hit. And within four years of it being written in America, it was sung here to a different set of words. And that's one thing that a lot of um, singers and writers of songs would have done in those days, and still do today, write a song to a tune that people already know. So it's very, all you would need is a crib sheet, a broadsheet, a ballad sheet, 
and you could, you had the tune already and you sung it to that tune. And then when I was putting this talk together many, many years ago, I was listening to somebody singing God Save Ireland or whatever, and uh, an acquaintance of mine who has been known to march on the 12th said, I know that tune. We marched to that on the 12th. That's very interesting. That's just what my talk's all about. And he said, actually, there's a, there a verse we used to sing to it. So he gave me the verse and uh, I said, have you any more of that song? And he said, no, that's the only verse I ever had. I have never heard any other verses. And when you've heard the one verse, you might be glad that there's no more verses because it sets up its stall in one verse and tells you exactly where it's coming from. So this is uh, an American solo war song, a Fenian song, and an orange song, all to the one tune. Tramp, 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 the boys are marching. Cheer up, comrades, they will come. And beneath the starry flag, we shall breathe the air again of the free land and our own beloved home. God save Ireland, cried the heroes. God save Ireland, cried they all. Whether on the scaffold high or on battlefield we die, what's it matter if for air and there we fall? No Pope, priest, or holy water, no home rule for Ireland. And if I had a gun, I would shoot them everyone for walking on the Queen's Highway. So there you are. And I think I could finish on that, but you've got the idea. That's, I'm just going to be elaborating on that for the next 45 minutes. That's a whole thing succinctly put up. The tune itself has no allegiance. And how you hear that tune, it depends on where you come from. If you hear them, Dun, dun, da, 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 da. You may think of Tramp, Tramp, Tramp in your youthful days. You may think of God Save Ireland. Or having marched on the 12th, you may think of No Pope Priest or Holy Water. <laughs> That's up to yourself. Um, I'll start off with that. I've given you sheets there now. Some of them uh, contain songs with choruses, which I wouldn't mind you joining in on. But there are a few ones which would just be, uh, I'll just sing them. And uh, one of those is the first song on one side of your sheets, which I think I've cut off the wee bit of the top of the name. It's called The Orange Maid of Sligo. <coughs> it was a song from around about, I think it's 1852. It was written by a fella called Brother William Archer, who was a member of the Old Bridge Lodge 597. Now, Old Bridge would be in, is it County Meath? It's on the coin <coughs> anyway and it would have been the bridge at which the Battle of the Boyne was fought, the old bridge. And he was a member of that historic um, lodge, and he published as a book of his own songs in 1852 called The Orange Melodist. As far as I know, this is the only song that still survives and is still sung. And one of the reasons it's still sung is it's absolutely beautiful. The tune is gorgeous and the words are, I think, very well done. And it shows um, a thinking connection behind the writing of these songs in the middle of the, I used to say the last century, and I have to say of the century before last. Um, it is very much rooted in an Irish and a Gaelic tradition of Ashling poetry. Now the Ashling, you may know the word Ashling as a girl's name, but it actually means a vision. And in the Ashling poetry, a poet sees a vision of a beautiful girl and falls immediately in love with her and must have her, marry her and live with her forever. With the rise of nationalism, that vision that he saw turned out to be Ireland. <coughs> uh, and the girl became a personification of Ireland. And he had to marry her, sign up to the cause, and fight for Ireland. She was granny away in. She was rushing through. She was a daughter of Daniel O'Connell or whatever. Well, this is the same idea, except that the girl the fellow meets in this is the orange maid of Sligo, and he must sign up to the orange cause and fight for the other colour on the flag, uh, which I don't think had been invented at that stage, the green, white, and orange. 
Um, as I say, it's a lovely tune, um, and uh, you may recognise the tune, I'll refer to that afterwards, uh, which goes to something else as well. But I think this is the original words that were put to the tune. I don't know if uh, Brother William Archer himself wrote the tune, but this is a tune always associated with the orange made of Sligo. And Sligo, of course, now in the Republic of Ireland, but a very strong orange uh, tradition in the county. Still until this day where lodges come up to Donegal and into the north on the 12th to March on the 12th of July. On Ben Bulban's high and lofty heights, the evening sun was setting bright. It cast a ray of golden light around the bay of Sligo. A tiny craft with glancing oars and flowing sails the one before. It blew the tiny craft ashore to this the bay of Sligo. And at the bow there sat the girl with the lovely cheeks and flaxen curls. Her tender beauty was like a pearl, t'was the orange maid of Sligo. And glancing o'er the vessel's side, she saw upon the waters glide an orange lily's golden pride around the bay of Sligo. Make haste, make haste, and save that flower. I prize it more than any other. No traitor must have it within his power around the bay of Sligo. An orange youth then with a bow did catch that flower and with a bow bestowed it on the lovely brow of the orange maid of Sligo. She soon became his lovely bride and off they thought at even tide upon that lily's golden pride around the bay of Sligo. So all through blues come fill your glass, a better toast will never pass. We'll drink unto that lovely lass, the orange maid of Sligo. Now as I say, you may know that tune to another song, which is called Avondale. Um, about Charles Stuart Parnell, but uh, that tune wasn't written until that song wasn't written until the 1950s, and it was Dominic Behan, brother of the great playwright Brenton Behan, who wrote Avondale. Mm. So he's looking back on Parnell many, many years before through rose-coloured spectacles, and uh, the. One of the verses in it goes, Oh, have you been to Avondale and lingered in her lovely vale, where tall trees whisper low oh, the tale of Avondale's proud eagle. So using the same tune, and that's another thing, if one side has a good tune, <laughs> or the other side has no compunction whatsoever <laughs> in picking it up, because it's just music. And it's what you do with it that gives it its colour. And uh, now one of the best known, I would say, tunes uh, in Ireland and uh, from the orange side of the house would be the sash my father wore. It was old, but it was beautiful, and its colours and they were fine. It was worn at Derry Aharam, in a skillin and a boyne. My father wore it as a youth, in the bygone days of yore. And it's on the twelfth I love to wear, the sash my father wore. I hear some enthusiastic <laughs> joining in going on there. Now everybody I think knows at least that chorus, uh, if not any verses, and uh, most people I've talked to know no more than that chorus, but it's ingrained in us. We've heard it so often uh, as a chorus, and we've heard the tune so often as a tune. And as a result of that, 
it's become non-music. It's a piece of functional art. It's used at a time, in a place, for a purpose. To show solidarity with your own team, to raise the other team, ironically by one team against the other, but it's actually a beautiful tune, which you, you may overlook. Uh, it's not the, you wouldn't sort of learn it up as your entry on the X Factor, but it's a gorgeous tune. It's a bit like Happy Birthday to You. It's sung on occasions, for an occasion, but outside of that, it sort of doesn't exist, which is a pity, because it's an absolutely gorgeous tune. As you will see from the next song on your sheets, Irish Molly, which was a very <coughs> favourite broadside ballad, often printed. Broadside ballads would have been from the 15th, 16th century on. Ballads printed on newspaper sheets and sold at fairs or any big gathering, uh, horse racing meetings or whatever. And people, would, the ballad singer would sing the song, sell the ballad to the people for a halfpenny or a penny or a sheet of four different songs for a penny. They would take it home and learn it themselves and sing it. That's how a lot of songs got passed around. This particular version was uh, very popular apparently in North America in the early 1800s and I got it from a fellow that some of you know called Tommy Sands, mm -hmm. uh, one of the Sands family from uh, Mayo Bridge <coughs> and uh, he got it in a book in a library in Philadelphia. So, But it uses the same tune as uh, the sash my father wore and you can see how the connection, if you look at the chorus it says she is young and she is beautiful. And you can see where a man was writing a song about a sash. Went, I know another song here. I know another. She is young. But it is old and it is beautiful. We'll go with that. So you uh, know the tune. If you uh, want to join me in the chorus, feel very welcome. It's a, I say it's a lovely tune. And the song is a song of oh, disappointed love, or thwarted love, I suppose I should say. The text of it, if you read through it, is about a fellow from Glasgow who falls in love with a girl from Tyrone and the father uh, disapproves of this foreigner and won't let the girl marry him and says if she has anything more to do with him he will disown her and never speak to her again. You can tell this is from a time when uh, girls took notice of what their father said to them because she knocks it on the head and uh, Young MacDonald is broken hearted. Tell me who is that poor stranger that has lately come to town and like a pilgrim all alone he wanders up and down. He's a poor forlorn little Glasgow lad and if you would like to know his heart is breaking all in vain for his Irish mommy oh She is young and she is beautiful and her likes I've never known. The lily of old Ireland and the primrose of Tyrone. She's the lily of old Ireland and no matter where I go my heart will always hunger for my Irish mommy O. Ah, but when her father heard of this, a solemn vow he swore that if she'd wed a foreigner, he would never see her more. He called for young MacDonald and he plainly told him so. I'll never give to such as you, my Irish Molly O. She is young and she is beautiful, and her likes I've never known. The lily of old Ireland and the primrose of Tyrone. She's the lily of old Ireland. And no matter where I go, my heart will always hunger for my Irish mommy, oh, my Donald Herb.
the heavy news, and as sadly he did sing, Farewell, my lovely Molly, I am banished far away, till the death shall come to comfort me, <coughs> and to the grave I go. My heart will always hunger for my Irish Molly, oh. She is young and she is beautiful, and her likes I've never known. The lady of old Ireland and the primrose of Tyrone. She's the lady of old Ireland, and no matter where I go, my heart will always hunger for my Irish Molly. So there you are, you can take that home and learn that for the twelfth and surprise people by singing it at sessions. Now, now not only do songs cross uh, what may be seen as ideological divisions, but they can cross language divisions as well. It doesn't matter what language you hear the tune sung in, the tune will stick in your head. And uh, I'll give you an example of a song that um, is available in both Irish and in English. Uh, the Irish language version is a drinking song and the English language version is an orange song but it uses basically the same tune. Uh, it's the uh, next one on your sheet is called All and Punch. Now some of you will have some Irish and uh, but even those with not much Irish, if I tell you that the word, the verb all means to drink, you could nearly work out what the first line of the chorus means all them punch is all them tea. I drink punch and I drink tea. It's a Lani Asian all them toddy, and the day after that I drink toddy. Nivimer meshkach ursare. I don't be drunk except once in a while. Mograsa and jerk is in tea a happy. My love is charity and the man that invented it. So the idea behind this song is it's a man who would be as we used to say, fond of a drink. And how you would get the money to buy that drink would be from the kindness of others. And when he would get that kindness, he would have enough money to drink. If he didn't get that kindness, then he'd have to drink tea rather than a toddy or punch. And the song was written in the late 18th century by a father, Liam English who was a prior of the Augustinian uh, monastery in Cork. Now I've recently discovered that they were a mendicant order of monks. That means they lived, they didn't have any grant from the church or any land of their own to grow crops and sell them and all that. They lived on charity from people. The local populace supported them. So maybe that's what gave Father English the idea of that, of the song. And uh, apparently he was a great singer himself, so he would give the people something in return for their money by singing them a song, a very early form of busking from the 18th century in Cork. And uh, I don't know if he was, uh, the, the idea of the song is to say, uh, the verses say that sometimes he's sober, the next day he's on, on the cans, as they say. And uh, one day, drinking away at wine, and the next day without any wine. But his love is charity and the man that invented it. And he loves a wee drink and he's very happy to get it. And God bless charity. Maybe this was a good song to get a few pence in them days off the punters. <coughs> but uh, if you want to sing along, I'll uh, have plenty of time. I'll talk you through the chorus and you'll uh, get the words in your mouth. And then I'll sing you the tune and maybe you can join me in the chorus. So the first words, line, if you would repeat it after me, is All them punch is all them tea. All them all them punch is all them tea. It's an lani yeshin all them toddy. It's an lani yeshin all them toddy. It's an lani er meshka ach ur 
Ni viam ar mescha ach ur sere. Ni viam ar mescha ach and jerkas and che a chiapi. Now you're starting to flag now, you see. Mograsa and jerk and che a chiapi. Mograsa and jerk and che a chiapi. People have a tendency to want to say cap if you come from up this part of the country. But if you're down my neck of the woods, we say cap. And uh, that's the way it's cap, it's the way it's pronounced with a, a slight on the C. So we'll just run through that one more time. All them punches, all them tay. 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 It's a laniation, all them toddy. It's a laniation, all them toddy. It's a laniation, all them toddy. Nivim ermeshka ach ur sere. Nivim ermeshka ach ur sere. Nivim ermeshka ach ur sere. Mograsa and Jerk Sanche a Chapi. Mograsa and Jerk is in Che a Chapi. Grant. So now that good bed comes, you have to learn the tune after me singing it twice. All and punches all and te. Just have a listen to it and get it into your head first. All and punches all and te. Some laniation all and toddy. Nearly a mer mesh cacker serre. Mograss and jerk. Some che and chappy. So listen to it one more time. All and punches all and te. Some laniation all and toddy. Nearly a mer mesh cacker serre. Mograss and jerk. Some che and chappy. And unusually for songs, it starts with the chorus on the low part of the tune, goes into the verse on the high part. Most songs do it the other way about, but trust Cartman to be contrary. <laughs> so if you want to sing along with me. On punch is all in tea, it's a laniation on toddy. New me and my mesh cahoors today. Mograss and jerk, it's a tea and chappy. And again. All in punch is all in tea. Some laniation on toddy. New the Mermeshka who's a re. Mograss and check, it's a chain and chappy. Okay, this one, this time we'll go for it. Uh, you come in whenever the chorus comes round now to sing the verses. All in punch is all in tea. Some laniation on toddy. New the Mermeshka who's a re. Mograss and check. It's a chain of chappy. Lama beam la heat the tree. Beam lani a glug the gunny. Laugh the fiend is a least gun of brain. O rass and jerk. It's a chain of chappy. All in punch is all in hay. It's a lani a shin all in toddy. New him bear mescha worse away. Mograss and Jack, it's in Che and Chappie. Er ma hack no ye er creed, and o we sin ye, it's no heaven nanny, washed to hell is venerably. O tam the Jack, sneep well to my daddy. All the punch is on Che, it's a man in his body. You be a bird, Mesh Gah, or Sore. Mograss and Jack, it's a chain of chappy. The sow will be a mulloil of green, gun sims a tail, a scrape a study act, gun hind, gun he's a munching a sir, na fatty jerk, na carriage is on me. All in punch is all in play, it's a laniation all in toddy. New in her mesca ursere, Mogras and Jerk, the Sanche and Chappy. Okay, thanks very much. Now, that tune is a, a version of that tune is also used for the next song on your list, which is called Lurgan Town. And I'm going to give me and you a rest. I'm going to play somebody else singing the song for a number of reasons. Uh, one, it gives everybody a break. 
and uh, it gives a different colour to the proceedings here in the Mother Voice. But uh, particularly because this singer, who's called Jordi Hanna, is a singer from Derry Tresk in the County Trolls, is one of the best singers that there ever was in the history of the world. <laughs> a great traditional singer with a great style, a man who knew what he was doing with a song. Um, the people talk about traditional singers uh, as being tradition bearers, tradition carriers. They carry on and celebrate their own culture, but they are individual artists. And some of them know what they're doing and know why they're doing it, and know they're doing it because it is a piece of art. And there's a story that God rest Jordy's sister, Jordy and his sister Sarah Ann are both no longer with us, but uh, they were at a session one night and a fella, well-known traditional singer, asked Jordy to sing a song and he said, Sarah Ann, what will I sing? Uh, and she said, go ahead and know. He said, I'll sing The Blackbird of Avondale, which is another song about Parnell. And she says, I imagine he's sick listening to that song. And Jordy said, ah, but he never heard the notes I have in it. <laughs> <laughs> so you hear the notes that Jordy has in Lurgan Town. It's a song, a complaining song from the Orange side about a march that was banned in Lurgan in round about, I imagine, 1840, working from the text. Um, because in the second verse it says, Meetings every night he holds about repeal and Dan O'Connell. Mm. So Daniel O'Connell, the liberator, would have been agitating for the repeal of the Act of Union around about the 1840s. So this is probably when this song was made and the, this complaint was made. And it says, Lurgan Town's an altered town since Papish Hancock he came to it. Now Hancock was the local GP and all marches had been banned at that stage because it had got fairly rough. People had been injured and some people had been killed. So all managed, there was a blanket ban on all marches. And the local GP, <coughs> Hancock, had to implement that ban. That ban. So he was known as Papish Hancock. Though I have since discovered he was a Quaker. And not Papish at all. He was one of the Hancocks, maybe actually the same family, who founded Friends School in Lisbon. He was the GP for Lurgan. And, uh, I suppose that on the premise that if you're not with us, you're against us. So if you're on the other side, you're a papist no matter what you are. They say, you know, are you a Protestant Jew or are you a Catholic Jew? One of that, them stories. So he was papish Hancock because he banned the march and he wouldn't let them sing orange songs and threw them in jail for doing so. And uh, as I say, Dan O'Connell is mentioned in the next verse and uh, it says, not a step you'll march unless your name be Pat or Donald. And uh, I say it's a, a song about this march being uh, banned and I'm playing it because it's a good song and it's a great song to sing. I have sung it myself on occasion when the occasion arose, though um, you need to judge your company very well before you sing <laughs> certain songs. A uh, friend of mine told me that he'd heard these songs, songs of this touchy nature, let's say, being called toe tappers, and I thought it meant get your toe tapper, get your blood up. And he says, No, no. It was explained to him that if you sing it and you're in the wrong company, a foot will slide across under the table and tap your toe, and it will suddenly develop amnesia. He says, Oh, I'll forget that one. Oh, I'll sing Paddy's Green Shamrock Shore instead. <laughs> so this might be classed as a toe tapper, but uh, it's a wonderful piece of work sung in a, a local style, the Hannah family were well-known singers, but with Jordy's own twist on it. I've collected twice. I well, Lurgan town's an older town, since Pepe's Hancock he came to it. If you walk on the twelfth day of July, I do declare he'll make you rue it. And if you sing an orange song, you'll be jailed for eight and forty hours. For the police knew well what to do to prosecute no one but 
Uitwerk. Oh, wat van da, wat heel ja, wat van heel da, de rijde die. Nou loodjen hel, zo hij hij hel, de wil hel de waar je zou het. Onder de pingen master dus dus neemt stijl dus Francis Kelly. And maidens every night the holes about repeal on Don O'Connell. And not a step bid let you march unless your name be Pat O'Donnell. Oh, quick for the fertility, quick for the fertility a day. Now we're on a dance in old Kilmore, these peppish bulldogs they came to it. They danced our girls around the floor, and Patrick's day the meadows played. Patrick's day on the white cocky, these were the cunes that they did play, sir. They danced our girls around the floor, then universe to be for such dancers. Oh, what for the fertility, what for the fertility a day. When the twelfth day of July come round, we made a stand of forty colours. We placed an arch upon the hill, on the road, here are no cowards. We then shook hands all we could do, saying, boys, remember the buying mother. Kelly says, if you come through, your orange blood will surely scatter. So what for that for tyranny? Quite full till the day a day. Oh, quite full now for till I am. Quite full till the day a day. Ah, oh, lovely, lovely work. And brings out a sort of brings out a sort of humour in the song that you wouldn't see on the printed page. You know, uh, a bit tongue in cheek. And actually, I've seen printed versions of the song where those last four lines are turned around and give it a different feel. If you do the second four lines as Kelly says, if you come through your orange blood we'll surely scatter. We then shook hands all we could do, saying boys remember the boiling water. There's nice resignation about that other way of looking at it. That's more bloodthirsty maybe a wee bit slightly more pinion touch in there. I'm not too sure who did that change but you can sing it in different ways to different people for a different effect. And uh, it's it's lovely to hear that accent that when he sings uh, Patrick's Day in the White Cockade, these were the cunes that they did play, sir. Which is, a, I think, only a Tyrone thing where T and C are very much the same. Furnicure, people say, or nature. And I remember a fellow telling me that he was at Queen's and he had a <coughs> physics lecture from Tyrone. And he never knew whether, until he actually put it up on the board, whether the figure he was talking about was a cube or a cube. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, he mentions in that song, uh, Patrick's Day and the White Cockade, these were the cunes that we, they did play, sir, we did play, sir. Um, they would have been looked upon as Fenian tunes. Patrick's Day maybe for obvious reasons, but the White Cockade maybe not so obvious because it is a Scottish tune. So, with and we're now celebrating our Ulster Scots heritage, you would think that it would have been fairly acceptable to a loyalist population. But the white cockade was the rosette that the Jacobites wore in their hats. So that would have shown you were a Jacobite supporter, even though there were no words, they just knew the tune, they went, that's a white cockade, and boys are trying to get us. Uh, but the white cockade as a tune is used for loads of different songs, uh, from both sides of the house and in both languages. I'm going to play a recording of uh, a version of 
the White Cockade, which is sung to the song of Mogila Mar, which is a favourite Jacobite song from Munster, um, written by a fellow called Sean Clarach MacDonald at the start of the uh, 18th century. And uh, the chorus goes, as you see on your sheet, Shema Leach Mogila Mar, Shema Hazar Mogila Mar, Suin the Shein you would have seen, O Hui again Mogila Mar. He is my hero, my bright boy. He is my Caesar, my bright boy. Um, peace or prosperity I have never had since he went abroad, my, my bright boy, my lovely boy. And uh, it's um, either a widow lamenting the loss of her lover or, uh, or it's Ireland, Jacobite Ireland, lamenting the loss of its possible last Catholic king. It can be interpreted both ways. It's very popular uh, nowadays in Coulé, in the small gate that in West Cork where Sean O'Reilly went to live in the later years of his life. And uh, it's sung here by the Coulé Choir. And they, it's their sort of national anthem. If you're down in any sessions in Coulé and it comes to the end of the night, whatever time of the night that might be, uh, the team will all sing Miguel Amar and you know that's the night over. You have to go home after that. So that clears the house. It's a wonderful way to clear a house. I'll just play you a couple of verses of uh, of the Coulet Choir singing Miguel Um Each person takes a solo on the verse and then the choir joins in the chorus. Sean's son Padero Rieda on the harpsichord at the start. Oh, 
Um, the, they actually have a verse extra in there that they don't sing, so I may rectify that for the next outing. And it's great to hear the youngsters coming and singing it as well. It's a great age group in that choir, and every year I see them at the Molly Clancy Summer School, and there's another new younger generation coming in and singing the songs with gusto. So I'm going to finish off with another song, <coughs> sung to a version of that tune, which I myself didn't spot as being a version of the tune till it was pointed out to me, because the rhythm is different. So if you change the rhythm of Miguel Amar from Dum da dai dum dai dum do, lai do do dai dum di dai do to Rum dilly dum dilly dai dum do, dilly dum dilly dum dilly dai dum do. As I roved out through Dublin and Sydney at the hour of twelve at night, who should I spy but the Spanish lady washing her hair by the candlelight? So everybody knows that song. It was very popular in the the 60s when I was growing up, and I'm sure before that as well, maybe Delia Murphy sang it, I'm not sure. But that tune is also used for the last song on your sheets, The Sons of Levi, which is an initiation, song about an initiation into a secret order, very much based on biblical imagery. The idea of uh, rituals to initiate you into secret organizations is long founded and a lot of them are to do with being brought out of darkness into light. About a journey, like the X Factor. It's a journey. You make it from the start to the finish. You cross the River Jordan into the Promised Land. Uh, it actually says there at one stage uh, where the Joshua and I passed over Jordan. And apparently in a lot of these rituals, they are they can't actually take you into the River Jordan. Uh, and get you to cross it over. So a basin of water or something got to be placed on the floor. You can go, yeah, go if you want. Now. If you have to go back to your work or anything, thank you for coming. Uh, don't feel, I won't be offended if you walk out with me. Uh, I know people have other commitments in their life than listening to me. And uh, you would have a, maybe a basin of water on the floor and you would step over that basin of water. You have crossed the waters of the Jordan into the Promised Land or you'd be blindfolded and taken into a room full of candles. The blindfold would be taken off and you would see the light. So this is the same idea. But, uh, and uh, it's an orange song now printed in orange songbooks, but was originally a Masonic song. And it was taken over by the lodges, which they did a lot of when they were set up in 1795, took their structures from the Masons with lodges, sashes, uh, ceremonies, secret passwords, etc., etc. They based their, their structure on the Masons, and then the Masons fell by the wayside when uh, it was decided by the Catholic Church that Catholics weren't allowed to be Masons because Daniel O'Connell was a Freemason himself, but it was decided that no, you couldn't serve two gods as they saw the Masons as being. So Catholics were then taken out of the equation and it was left to other religions to fill up the ranks. So, if you want to join me on this, um, the chorus goes, For we are the true-born sons of Levi, none on earth with us compare. We are the root and the branch of David, the bright and the glorious morning star. So you want to try that. For we are the true-born sons of Levi, none on earth with us compare. We are the root and the branch of David, the bright and the glorious morning star. So I'll sing the verses and you join in the chorus. And uh, I know some of you will be well acquainted with the biblical references herein, which coming from a different tradition, I was not reared to the Old Testament. So they don't have as much resonance for me as they do perhaps for some of you. But the words still feel great to sing. <coughs> so we'll all sing it like good, loyal, Orange brethren together. <laughs> Come all your brethren that do wish to propagate the grand design. Come enter into our high temple and learn the art that is divine. For we are the three born sons of Levi, none on earth with us compare. We are the root and the branch of David, the bright and the glorious morning star. Noah planted the first garden, Moses planted Aaron's rod. 
He smote the waters of the Egyptians and turned the Jordan into blood. For we are the firstborn sons of Levi, none on earth with us compare. We are the root and the branch of day, but the bright and the glorious morning star. As Josh and I passed over Jordan, we did twelve stones bear along. It was the high priest and our grandmaster that bore the ark of God along. For we are the firstborn sons of Levi, none on earth with us compare. We are the root and the branch of David, the bright and the glorious morning star. With our seven trumpets of ram's horn, sounded along before the ark. Gilgal was our rest and quarters, there we left our holy mark. For we are the firstborn sons of Levi, none on earth with us compare. We are the root and the branch of David, the bright and the glorious morning star. So come all ye of our and join with me, and learn the art as I have done. Come enter into our high temple to this, the new Jerusalem. For we are the three born sons of Levi, none on earth with us compare. We are the root and the branch of David, the bright and the glorious morning star. So I hope the idea that you've got from this talk is that uh, it's all the one music. It all comes from the same place. Uh, it's only how you interpret it that makes it different. So we should all be aware of the connections between us. Celebrate them and uh, given the right circumstances, sing the songs because that's what keeps songs alive. Thank you very much.